I'm nearing completion of the postgraduate program for artificial intelligence and machine learning at the University of Texas at Austin. It's a seven month program designed to build concrete skills in AI and ML. And you get a professional certificate at the end of it. This video is part of a series where I'm reviewing the program in real time as I'm going through it. And today I'll be reviewing the fifth module, which is computer vision. I'll talk through what I learned the project I did, time commitment, and difficulty. I cover the other modules in separate videos, so make sure to subscribe and check those out. And feel free to take a look at the link down in the description below if you wanna learn more about the program for yourself. With that said, let's get to it. For some of you considering this program, this might be the module you look forward to the most. Computer vision, after all, is what some of the most interesting use cases in AI and ML are all about, like Tesla's full self-driving. But for me, I actually wasn't looking forward to this one all that much. Most of the use cases for AI, for me, had to do with data analytics, not imagery or video. Well, guess what? This actually ended up being the most fun and fascinating module of the entire program. And what was most interesting was everything that I had learned up until this point still very much applied. Because all the things I learned with machine learning, neural networks, and now with computer vision, well, a lot of those images and videos get turned into numbers. Numbers that a computer can work with. So you had to understand machine learning and neural network concepts in order for computer vision to work. Because really what's happening here with computer vision is you're turning all the tiny little pixels on screen into a vector of numbers. That's, that's my attempt of a square uh, vector. And the numbers that occupy those vectors depend on the light intensity of the pixel or the color. Since all of that can be represented by numbers, neural networks can use this to learn and understand images. I think this point will make a little bit more sense as I explain the project, so let me talk about that now. The business challenge had to do with agriculture. And here there was a need to identify different plants and weeds as their saplings. In other words, when they're basically baby plants. And the reason to identify all these plants and weeds was so that they can ensure that the plants were growing the right way. And secondly, presumably for the weeds that you can properly identify them and remove them. The case actually didn't quite explain that fully, but I'm assuming that's what they would want to do. But nonetheless, we needed to build a model to identify 12 different types of plants. The big challenge is some of these plants, when they're saplings, look very similar. Also, there are thousands of images to look at of all these different plants, really, again, just the 12 plants, but many images, and you have to identify them all. As you can imagine, this would be extremely time consuming to do manually, not to mention, you probably wouldn't get great accuracy, which is where a good machine learning algorithm can identify the subtle differences at that stage for these plants and tag them accordingly across thousands of images, especially new images that the model would take in. Now the data set that we got to use contained almost 5,000 images. And that's what I use to train, test, and validate. There's some data pre-processing that needs to be done to get these images formatted in a way that makes it work for the algorithm. Then we build the different models, tune different parameters, and once I built out a few of them, I was able to assess the results. What these models are ultimately doing is trying to identify patterns within these different groups of pixels. And when you're training this model on a bunch of data, a bunch of images, it'll begin to notice that every time it detects a pixel that is a shade of green, it's likely a leaf of a plant. But not only that, it's not just a pixel, but it's the pixel in context of the other pixels that surround it. So then it says, when it detects this pixel next to another pixel, that's a much lighter shade of another color, then that's probably where the leaf ends in the image and now it's seeing background. 
So it's learning about how the pixels are all oriented around one another. It's how it learns, for example, that some plants have skinnier leaves than others. And so after I built all my models, the best one ended up having about 75% accuracy. And it would have been higher had it not been for two plants in particular that the model had a really challenging time distinguishing between. All the other plants, fortunately though, were much easier at being identified correctly. But no amount of parameter tweaking that I did really improved the result that much more. So ultimately I was satisfied with what I had there. So this module was pretty time consuming, about 10 hours per week, which I guess is kind of average for what the program had been for me. I spent less time hyper engaged with the pre-recorded videos and I spent a lot more time on the project itself. But the time actually went by pretty fast. I was able to pick it up fairly quickly and the topic itself, like I mentioned, ended up being super interesting. So it didn't feel like a tremendous amount of work. So all in the time commitment really wasn't that much of a burden. As far as difficulty, this one was somewhat difficult because the subject matter just continues to get more and more complex. But again, because it was enjoyable, it didn't feel all that bad. And I was much more engaged in the learning process, which when it came to the project itself, I had a lot of fun trying to build out these models and trying to make the results better and better. So in this case, I'd give the difficulty a three out of five. Now the program itself is still meeting my expectations. The content is still good, still well explained. All the recent content that I've been through, the pre-recorded content at least, has been taught by university faculty, but I still have to consult with some third-party resources, YouTube in particular, to understand some of the concepts. But that's not unusual. I would expect to do the same, and I have done the same with formal degree programs. The next module will be on natural language processing, which is like your ChatGPT, Copilot, Gemini, whatever LLM you're familiar with. So make sure to check out that video, as well as all the other videos in this series where, again, I review the entire program as I'm doing it. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comments below. And with that said, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you around.